before KSI versus Logan Paul. Before Asterios versus War of the Fanboys. There was Uva Ball versus his critics. And while many people who argue on the internet like to say, fight me IRL, it rarely actually comes to fruition. So what was different this time? Find out on this episode of Tales from the Internet. Uva Ball is considered by many people to be the absolute worst filmmaker of all time. You can see the presence of many of his movies on IMDb's bottom 100 movies of all time. But there's a lot of bad movies out there, and there's a lot of bad filmmakers out there, so what makes Uva Ball specifically so hated? I think there's a number of factors that we have to consider. Uva Ball's career actually spans back a lot further than people realize. In 1992, he directed his first feature film entitled German Fried Movie, a clear reference to the 1977 movie Kentucky Fried Movie. And from that time going forward, he pretty consistently put out new movies. But he didn't find himself on most people's radars, and certainly not in his critics' crosshairs, until 2003. That's when he put out House of the Dead, which was his first video game adaptation. And by that point, as I said in my Battletoads video, people had already come to expect any video game movie to be terrible. Yet despite the fact that we had already developed these expectations, for some reason Uwe Boll's work was hit with much more ire than any video game movie director before him. One of the most common criticisms of him was that he would just completely change key elements of the source material. Alone in the Dark goes from being an atmospheric, Lovecraftian horror game to a over-the-top action horror movie. House of the Dead goes from being a game about agents tracking down a mad scientist to a bunch of teens go to a rave gone wrong. But changing things up in a video game adaptation wasn't really anything new. I mean, does this look like a Goomba to you? Check out Agent Doggett's flat top in Double Dragon. And don't even get me started on Resident Evil. I mean, who the fuck was Alice? Like, okay, and I know this is gonna be a controversial opinion, but say what you want about House of the Dead. House of the Dead barely even had a story to begin with, but Resident Evil... With Resident Evil, Paul W.S. Anderson took a giant steaming shit on the chest of the game series that's definitely one of my favorites of all time. And then you get these people that are like, oh well, you know, if you forget that it's a Resident Evil movie, it holds up as its own, it fucking doesn't. It sucks. You suck! In my opinion, nothing Uwe Ball ever did was as big of a disgrace as the Resident Evil movies, but you know what, uh, God forbid he changes the story that barely even existed of the game that you play when you're a half hour early to the movie theater. What a tragedy. But now, that being said, I have to admit that on a technical level, the Resident Evil movies are a bit more passable. Ball's movies kinda specialized in cringy acting, bad CG, and awkward stylistic choices. And but in a world that was becoming increasingly flooded with straight-to-DVD B-movies, I don't think any of these individual elements were really anything special to hate extra on their own. I don't think that Uwe Ball would have ever gained his reputation as the world's worst director if he wasn't doing what he was doing at the time he was doing it. In the early to mid-2000s, internet satire was really starting to mature as a genre, and for the first time ever, you had people making their livings just from being funny on the internet. And one of the most tried-and-true formulas that was as popular then as it still is today was mocking bad pop culture. You take the rise of this kind of content and combine it with the fact that this side of the internet was heavily entwined with gaming, and you realize that Uwe Ball was the guy making the perfect kind of content for the perfect audience at the perfect time. When I say perfect, I mean perfect to be public enemy number one. So what you wind up with is a lot of people across various websites and forums basically trying to outdo each other for finding the funniest way to describe why Uwe Ball movies suck. And for that matter, why Uwe Ball sucks. And oftentimes, the comedy didn't come so much from explaining the movie, but from rather assessing Uwe Ball as a person. And this was a fact that he was not happy about. If you read the Blood Rain reviews, it is completely ridiculous. 75% of the review is about me as a person and nothing about Blood Rain, he says. I'm not expecting good reviews, but still, in any review there should be at least a few lines of the technical work of the movie. Who's in it, whatever. They can write that they don't like the movies, but this didn't happen. And this was so annoying that I said at some point, look, 
I want to fight these guys. And this all came to a head in 2006, when he finally issued a press release challenging critics to actually fight him. Uva is now challenging the critics that failed to watch his films prior to reviewing or commenting to put up or shut up. Towards the end of the filming of Postal, the five most outspoken critics will be flown into Vancouver and supplied with hotel rooms. As a guest of Uva Bowl, they will be given the chance to be an extra slash stand-in in Postal and have the opportunity to put on boxing gloves and enter a boxing ring to fight Uva Bowl. Each critic will have the opportunity to bring down Uva in a 10-bout match. There will be five matches planned over the last two days of the movie. Certain scenes from these boxing matches will become part of the Postal movie. All five fights will be televised on the internet and will be covered by international press. This event would be quickly picked up by GoldenPalace.com, an online gambling site, who started promoting the fight as Raging Bull. The majority of people at Uva Bowl wound up to challenge by name were posters from the IMDB message board. However, the five spots to fight Uva Bowl would wind up being filled by more prominent internet critics. Lotex, the creator of SomethingAwful.com. Prior to the challenge, he had actually not seen any of Uva Bowl's movies, but after he heard about it, he had this to say. Alone in the Dark. A movie by a stupid German jerk who is stupid and smells and probably molests dead children. Although if that last part is considered slander and or libel in Canada, then just disregard and pretend it actually said he molests living children instead. Another challenger was Jeff Snyder of Ain't It Cool News. Like Lotex, he had also previously never actually watched an Uwe Boll movie. Now, I had never even seen an Uwe Boll movie, but Ain't It Cool had really given this guy his reputation as the world's worst filmmaker. Uh, the next challenger, Chris Alexander of Rumorg, was more familiar with Uwe Boll's work. His movies are bad, they're terrible, they're awful, they're hypnotically bad, but they're so bad on such a gigantic, huge operatic scale. And then there's Chance Minter, who wasn't a critic, he was an amateur boxer who was just looking for his next fight. Bull's fourth opponent is Chance Minter, a 17-year-old cinephile from Frederick, Maryland. Before the fight, Minter got pumped up by listening to the theme song from Conan the Barbarian on his iPod. Bull's really wild, more of a brawler than a fighter, he says. His jab is weak. He tries to get close so he can swing wide. I'm just gonna go out there and do my thing. Although when asked, he wasn't much of a fan of Uwe Bull's work either. Most of his movies suck. There was also a Spanish fighter, Carlos Palencia Jimenez Arguello, who didn't make it to the Raging Bull event, but did wind up fighting Uva Bowl in Spain. He lost. And when the day of the official Raging Bowl event came around, Lotax, Chris Alexander, Chase Minter, and Jeff Snyder also lost. But there is a little bit of fuckery in this situation, at least According to Lotex, things weren't as they expected. To all my fans, I would have to say if an angry German man challenges you to a boxing match and you've had absolutely no training, and then he says, okay, well yeah, I'll train you before, and then he doesn't, and then he says, well, it doesn't matter, I'm not going to hit you really hard, and then he does, you have a good reason to hate him a lot. And when you see how these guys are really hamming it up before getting their faces punched in, there might be something to what Lotax is saying. There is also a rumor that Uwe Boll didn't actually box Chase Minter, the amateur boxer. And apparently there was some controversy from Golden Palace. They were concerned about the legalities of Uwe Boll beating up a 17-year-old. But I think this rumor stems from people misunderstanding something Lotax said. And the fourth guy, you know, when they said, and a real amateur boxer is going to be fighting him. The guy never even fought a fight. Yes, he's an amateur boxer because he's sparred before, but he's never fought. I think a lot of people misinterpreted this as him saying that Uwe Boll didn't box Chase Minter, when really he's saying that the kid's qualifications were overstated. And interestingly, after the event, Chase Minter would go on to work backstage on some of Uwe Boll's productions later on. And Chance wasn't the only one of the competitors to have his view of Uwe Boll changed after the fight. Here's how Chris Alexander described the day after the fight. The next day, bruised and beaten but exhilarated, I was picked up by Boll in his SUV, driven to his beach house with his lovely dogs Daisy and Lara in tow, and grilled on why I was so adamantly believed his genre films were so bloody awful. The man genuinely wanted to know. With a slew of upcoming horror and fantasy films on his slate, 
including the Lord of the Rings ripoff in The Name of the King with Ray Liotta and Burt Reynolds, he said he wanted to understand why people prejudge his work and why he doesn't get a fair critical shake. I had to tell him, Ball's movies are bloated, expensive, and incoherent attempts at aping American genre pictures and sport some of the most boneheaded casting choices in filmdom. But I left Vancouver with the impression of him as a delightfully insane, two-fisted rogue and a shockingly honest one at that. Someone who absolutely adores film, knows its history, and truly lives for what he does. Hell, he even had me pondering my role as a film critic. Whether I was someone who casually dismisses others' life work while wishing it was me making movies. Yes, House of the Dead is still inexcusably dreadful and sure, Alone in the Dark still sucks, harder than a Hoover. But the man behind those subpar picks is a true original. He didn't just pout about bad reviews, he took matters into his hard, punishing hands. And that deserves respect. It's just unfortunate that it took a public display of merciless skull battering to make me see this rather profound truth. And for what it's worth, I think there's one thing that Uwe Boll does not get enough credit for. I think it's been a trend over the past few years, honestly like maybe like the past couple decades even, to enjoy horror movies that are so bad that they're good. Yet so many of them, they can't help but act self-aware. Like they want to wink to us and let us know that they're in on the joke. And I think the real masters of the so bad that it's good movie, uh, people like H.G. Lewis or Tommy Wiseau, they didn't go out trying to make a bad movie. They just wanted to make whatever movie it was possible for them to be able to make. And I think Uwe Boll has a lot in common with them in that regard. Also, I think Rampage was just a legitimately good movie. But for better or for worse, Uwe Boll is now retired from filmmaking. Basically, my message is, fuck yourself. These days, he's actually a restaurateur, and apparently a damn good one at that. His restaurant, Bauhaus, wound up being named one of the top 100 restaurants in all of Canada. It also made a list published by the world's 50 best restaurants. So, you know, the next time you're sitting around casually watching House of the Dead, as people do, think of the Wiener Schnitzel. And if you like this video, check out this one. I'm out of here.